Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for Learn LearnNowFX and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at our brand new free particle plugin Node for the Vinci Resolve Fusion, so let's check it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Fusion composition and I'm going to make it 7 seconds long. I'm going to call this composition Nova and click on create. Now I'm going to drag this fusion composition onto the timeline. Make sure that the CTI is over the composition. Select the composition and head on over to fusion. Now that we're in the fusion tab, I'm going to search for our brand new plugin Nova, which you can get for free on our website. First link in the description below. And let's look at it in the viewer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off high quality to show you how quickly this plays back. Right off the bat you have a very nice animation and it plays back pretty quickly. We are getting 6.4 frames a second which isn't bad, we're in full HD. And I'm just going to show you what all these controls do one by one. So what we have here, the first one is layers. So the more layers you have, the more particles you will essentially have as well. These are the layers of particles that go one after another and these are created all of the time. And I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by this. So the next control is zoom. And if you zoom forward, you see that new particles are constantly being created. And they're fading in. Now, if you zoom backward, you can't see them being created, but they still are being created behind the camera. Now, this is a 2D plugin, and you cannot connect this to the any of the particle tools in Fusion. This just creates the particles and renders them all in the same fuse. So it uses a plugin that works in the free version of Fusion. So you can use it in the Vinci Resolve, and you can use this in the paid version of Standalone Fusion. You can use this in the paid version of the Vinci Resolve. You can use this practically anywhere. But the only place that you cannot use this is Fusion 9 because it doesn't have the GPU API in there. It has a completely different GPU acceleration API. But that's just for people who want to get into the code. So this is completely free and open source. And what you might think is that to be open source, you need a GitHub repository and stuff like that. But basically what you would do is when you download this file, you get a .fuse file. If so if you open this up in any text editor in Notepad++ or even Notepad, you will see all of the source code right in front of you. You can look through it, see the algorithms used. And now would probably be a good time to mention that I learned how to make this plugin from The Art of Code, which is a great resource, by the way, for learning GPU programming. I can highly recommend it. Thanks to the creators over there for teaching. It's an amazing place. So the zoom will let you zoom in and out. But let's say you wanted the zoom to be constant. Like if you have a music video that goes on for like five minutes, instead of setting keyframes and then tweaking the speed, you could turn on this auto zoom. And the auto zoom uses a time expression and lets it zoom forward or backward. So now it's set to zoom forward. So if you wanted to zoom backward, you would just go here and add a minus to this in front of it. And it's going to zoom in the opposite direction. You can bring up the speed of the zoom, you can bring it down. So now it zooms faster. You can bring it closer to zero. If it's zero, it won't zoom at all. It'll just stand there. So this is the zoom. And I'm going to uncheck auto zoom. And the next control we have is ev evolution rate. And that is how these points become animated. They get closer and further from each other. And that's what causes this very cool effect. So the faster the evolution rate, the faster these points move. Now, if I turn off auto evolve, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to stand still. And I have to bring the evolution up. So you'd have to create keyframes if you want to create some, something complex. You'd, cre you'd create keyframes. But I left this on by default because not a lot of people would want to do that. If you want to like ease in and ease out the evolution, but this is just an option that I left available for you guys. And the next option is actually very cool. This is called scatter solid, and this can dramatically change how this entire particle system looks. So I'm just going to go to a frame here and auto evolve is on, and this is the default evolution rate. So I'm just going to bring the scatter solid up. And as you can see, this creates a completely different looking grid. Now this looks a little bit coarse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Ease Scattered Solid. 
that just adds a little bit more depth to this. Now, if I turn the scattered solid all the way to zero, you'll see that we get something like this, which is pretty interesting. And this doesn't work when this is at zero. So you see that you have this point of animation. You can use this. This is actually a completely different effect. Also very cool. You can create these grids, but this is the default. It creates constellations. But when you bring this up, it creates a plexus-like sort of grid. So I'm going to bring this back to default. And the next one is brighten close lines. So basically, if this is at zero, none of the lines will be brighter than the others. Except the ones towards the back, they'll be faded, but they're not going to glow. And this just chooses random lines that are close to the camera to make them brighter, as you can see. It's like, like the lights here, you know, like neon. So they'll just, they'll just switch from one place to another, which ones are the bright ones. That's a very cool thing to have. And these two are the fade front and fade back. So this one fades the particles that are closest to the camera. So if I turn this down, you'll see that these particles become very, very coarse. And if I turn this up, it fades them by quite a bit. So the default is 0 0.5, and I like to leave it that way. In, unless you want to create some sort of dynamic ease or something like that. And this is the fade back. So this is actually... If you can see, this will make sense with the zoom. If I turn on the auto zoom, and I want to bring the size also to default, so it zooms forward. And as you can see, these particles are created in the back, and they just ease in. But if I turn this to zero, they would just burst. They would just burst. They would just be created like that. See? Create again, and again. So it wouldn't be wouldn't be as nice of an effect. So this is the entire style tab. We went through all of these controls. Now we can go through the transform tab. So here we have our standard controls and you don't even need to open this tab. You can just use the on-screen widget here. This is the center. You have the scale. You can scale it. You can scale in. You can, you can do it like that. But this isn't the same as zoom because you can, you can see the whole thing like this. I don't know why you need that many constellations though. Now, I'm thinking in my head that this would have been very good to do with our particle globe, and it would be a very interesting effect. So those of you who want to try it out, it would be very cool. You can check the link in the description for the particle globe tutorial. That's going to be very interesting. I'll put these two together. And the next thing here we have is the angle. So the angle is just going to change how this, the rotation of this whole image. And what we have here is auto-rotate. Now that's actually something very interesting. So it also uses a time expression to slowly rotate the image. And if you wanted to rotate the other way, you would just put a minus here, similar to the zoom. Now it just spins the other way. And you could bring the speed down or up to make it rotate faster. It makes it rotate really fast, really slow, whatever you want. And I'm going to turn this off. And I can go to the color here, and the default is set to a nice light blue, but you can use any color you want, like red. You can choose purple, you can choose any color you want, essentially. And there's a very interesting setting here. It's called Auto Color Animation. Now, if you check this, the color box will go away. And over time, the particles will change color. Like they're going to change from green to red, like you see here. And then it's going to go to a completely different color. But if you want it to animate faster or slower, you have this color animation speed control. And you can bring this up. Now it's going to animate a lot quicker, the color. And you can have a very interesting effect with this. Also, it would go, go good with maybe an audio visualizer or a music video that you would just have to zoom through. And it would be a very interesting visuals to go with the music. And the next control we have here is draw on a black background. Now, in order to see how this works, you're going to need to make sure that the checkered underlay is on. And if I turn this off, it will draw it on an alpha underlay. It will be completely transparent. So you can overlay this on, on a completely different colored background, like blue or, or gray or black, any color background you want. But to see the contrast, I'd leave this on because we're not going to be creating anything with this right now. 
And the last tab we have here is the glow. So if I bring the bloom up, it'll make all of these points brighter. Like that, a very nice glow. You can bring it down. If you bring it to zero, you won't have any glow. You'll just have these shapes here. You just have these lines. You won't even have the dots. And the last control is the sparkle. So if I turn this on, we'll get a sparkle speed slider. So this just randomly makes one point brighter over time and then darker. So it'll just twinkle a little bit. So you can bring this speed up to see, to better see how it works. So the points get brighter and darker and they twinkle. As you can see, they get brighter and darker. If you want to be really fast, you can bring it a little like this. Yeah, so they get brighter and darker and twinkle as it zooms through. So now that we went through all of the controls, I'm going to create a simple animation using this plugin, using the fuse. So I'm going to search for a brand new Nova, one that we didn't tweak any of the controls yet. And I want to animate two or three things in here. I'm going to go to frame zero, and I'm going to animate the zoom. You can also click on the diamond button to do that. And I'm going to go to the transform, and I'm going to animate the angle. And I'm going to go to the color and I'm going to turn on auto color animation. And I'm going to bring the speed of the color animation a little bit up, maybe to two, something like that to keep it a round number. All right. So as you can see, it doesn't do anything because we only created one keyframe. So if we go to frame 155, maybe 160, then we can go and we can zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in like that. And I'm going to bring the rotation, the angle actually, I'm going to bring it to 70. All right. And now if I can go here, I can watch how this animates through time. So that's pretty cool. And we're going to ease these keyframes right now. But one thing we want to do first is I'm going to grab a text plus node and I'm going to type Nova. And the font, I'm going to probably use something like Railway. And I want to choose a type like Extra Light. So let's look at our text. I want to make it a little bit larger. Like that. It's centered according to the font. So the next thing I'm going to add is a DVE. This is a 2.5D infusion. We use this quite a bit. So if I go to frame zero, I want to set the Z rotation to 70, create a keyframe, and I want to animate the Z move, bring it to zero, and set a keyframe. I'm going to go, going to go again to frame 160. I just want to make sure that my keyframe is there. I'm going to go to DVE, and I'm going to set this back to default, so one and zero. So let's watch this. So let's watch this animate. All right. So we're going to do some easing in a moment. And I'm just going to merge these two together. All right. And the best thing you'd want to do is you want to go to the DVE and turn on the motion blur. That would be would be the best thing to do. And you'd want to bring the samples up probably to like 20 at least to make it like a very nice motion blur, but I'm not going to do that now because it takes uh, quite a while to render motion blur, but that's just the best way to do it to get a very nice effect. And I'm going to go to the spline editor now, and we only animated two nodes. We have our Nova, the zoom and the angle, so I'm just going to select that, and I'm going to go like this. Select all of the points, Shift S, and this is the point that lets you see all of the keyframes that you made. All right. I just want to get this out of the viewer because it's always best not to see the viewer while you're playing with the splines. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is the Z move. I'm just going to click on that. And I want to deselect this, actually. I'm going to make it fit. And I'm going to select the points. Shift S. I'm going to unselect that. And now the Z rotation. So this is actually going to be a little bit different. I'm going to select the points. Shift S, and I want to create like a sort of dynamic ease in, but not an ease out, like a like an exponential sort of curve, but in the opposite direction. 
So probably something like this. And I want to bring this point closer as well. Like that. So it'll animate in the beginning, but not towards the end, like to sort of like zoom in like that. I can bring this probably even lower. Make sure that these lines aren't curving and everything will be fine. So here is our text. So let's watch this animation. I'm just going to zoom in like that. All right. So let's watch it. And after it plays back once, you'll see that it'll play a lot quicker. All right, so I'm going to go back to the beginning. And it should play a lot quicker this time around. Make sure that high quality is off to make it better. All right, so here's our animation. And it plays a lot quicker once it caches a little bit. All right. And the next thing I want to add, the last thing actually, is a shadow node to this after the DVE to, to like sort of separate the text from the background. So I'm just going to add a shadow node. And I'm just going to look at this in the viewer so I can see what I'm doing. Zoom in on it. And the only thing I want to increase is the softness. I don't want to change the direction or anything like that. Just increase the softness so you can see like a nice dark around it. So if I look at it here, we can see that we get this sort of hovering over the background. So here's our text. Looking pretty good. So all you have to do is connect this to the media out node and it will be available on the render tab and the edit tab. So I'm just going to visit that for a second. And the last thing I want to do is I want to go to timeline and I'm going to select output blanking 2 by 35 probably, 2.35. And one more thing I want to mention, if you need any support for this plugin, if you need any help or you just want to share some creations that you made, you can visit our Facebook group, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Link will be in the description below. You can share stuff you made with this plugin. You can share and ask any questions, actually any questions related to Fusion that you might have. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. And I'd like to see what you guys did with this plugin. So if you could share on Facebook or Twitter, hashtag LearnNowFX, capital L, capital N, capital F, capital X. That would be really cool to see what you guys made with this. And if you like this, if you like the content and the plugin, please consider subscribing. And uh, it'd be really, it'd be really cool to see what you guys made. So let's play this back and see what we got. Yeah, so it's a little bit. The first playback is always a little stuttery. So there we are. There's our text. So I hope you guys like this video. Until next time, I'm David Cohen. This is Lornow Facts, and I'll see you next week.